wilderness. And everybody who's been here, we've probably been teaching at least two months, maybe, or a little more, I don't know. But everything we've talked about, about the tabernacle in the wilderness, we all know that's been here. Even every article of furniture, the tabernacle itself, every part of it points to who? Jesus. Jesus. Every bit, y'all. Everything is about Jesus. Praise God. That's what we're going to be looking at today is the altar of incense. But every article of furniture, every piece of furniture in this tabernacle points to Jesus. Now, we are going to be talking about the altar of incense today. I want to give you a scripture out of Exodus chapter 30. Exodus chapter 30, verse 1, and then verse 6 through 9. And then we're going to pray that God will use me for His glory, that I can bring this thing down, bring it down where we can all understand it. Amen. Exodus 30, verse 1 says this, You shall make an altar to burn incense upon. Should a wood shall you make it. Verse 6 says, And you shall put it before the veil, that is, by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with you. Aaron shall burn their own sweet incense every morning. When he dresses the lamps, he shall burn incense upon you. When Aaron lights the lamps of the evening, he shall burn incense upon you, and perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall offer no strange incense thereof, nor meat offering, neither shall you pour drink offering thereof. Father, I thank you right now for your word. Your word is powerful. Your word is truth. Your word is life. Father, I ask right now that you would quicken your word in my spirit that I might feed your people and use this vessel for your glory. Touch every heart, every mind, every soul here that your word would penetrate the heart, fall upon the ground, spring forth, bring forth much fruit. Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you all the honor. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. Can you give God a big old clap of praise? Come on, come on, come on, come on. He's worthy, 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 worthy is the Lord God Almighty. He is worthy, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, you be seated, praise the Lord. It's so good to have our visitors again in the house. Good to have Stan's mom and dad with us and uh, Esther's sister and brother-in-law. We praise God for you being here with us. Pray that you'll receive a blessing. I know you already have. This is that granddaughter saying what a blessing that is. Amen. But uh, it's so good, y'all, to be in the house of the Lord. It's so good to speak and teach His Word. Y'all know I love to preach. And sometimes when I'm this kind of teaching, it's hard to preach and teach. You have to get a lot of teaching in. But maybe this evening I'll do some preaching. Praise God. At 4 o'clock, I'll do some preaching. Right now, I want to get a little bit of teaching in so we can really understand. And again, remember, the tabernacle, the whole tabernacle itself, every bit of it, every piece of thing that we even covered right now, all points to Jesus. We don't have to go through the ceremonies anymore. We don't have to uh, slaughter animals anymore. We don't have to go through the ceremonies that a lot of people think they got to go through to earn God's favor, whatever. We have God's favor through Jesus. Can I get an amen up in here? He paid the price. He laid his life down. He is that Lamb of God, okay? But with this, we're looking at the fifth. This is the fifth article of furniture we're looking at. This There's three articles of furniture that's in the holy place. We've come out of the outer court. We're into the holy place. We looked at the uh, lap stand, the golden lap stand. We looked at the table of shoe bread. And today we're going to look at the third piece of article in the holy place, okay? That is the golden altar of incense. And all these are in the holy place. And we know <clears throat> right where this altar is sitting, there is a veil that separated the holy place from the holy of holies. Going to get amen. amen. And in the holy of holies, we know that there were two articles of furniture. The Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat that went on it. So next week, we'll be talking about the Ark of the Covenant, and then we'll move to the mercy seat. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. But right now, we're going to look in the holy place, okay? And remember, I told you, it's like it's our journey with the Lord. I'm going to realize we're on a journey, and we're growing from glory to glory. And you cannot bypass any of these things we're even talking about. You cannot bypass the brazen altar, which represented what? The cross of Jesus. People try to bypass the cross of Jesus, and without the cross, guess what? We have no salvation. So this is what Jesus was teaching his people. This was a type, a pattern of things in heaven. And the Lord taught his people. So if anybody should have known when Jesus come, the Messiah come, it should have been his own people, the Jews. They should have known. In fact, God chose them to be a testimony to the world. They were to be the testimony. They were to be that nation that was supposed to tell them the world about Jesus. Now we know as a whole they failed, but praise God, Paul was a Jew, Peter was a Jew, James was a Jew, amen? And they were saved and born again and they spread the gospel. 
But here we are. Anyway, let's look at this altar, this golden altar of incense. It's the fifth article of furniture. It was an altar made of shittim wood and overlaid with gold. Now, we've been talking about the wood and the gold. And again, it's a picture of the Lord Jesus in his humanity and in his deity. Okay? The wood pointing to his what? Humanity. And the gold pointing to what? His deity. Can we see that? You're on the same page. Someone have me up in here. This article of furniture, this altar, of, the golden altar of incense, was three feet high. It was one and a half feet square. Three feet high. It was the tallest piece of furniture in the holy place. And what it speaks of is the highest act of worship possible. And we're going to go somewhere with this in just a minute. This is going to be awesome. Hopefully what you learned today, okay? And the highest Really, the highest act of worship possible is that of priestly prayer and intercession. And this is what the golden altar of incense represents, y'all. It represents the prayer and the intercession of the great high priest. And we're going to break that down to a little bit. The great high priest is who? It's Jesus. He's our great high priest. So this is what this altar, uh, the golden altar of incense, represents. Now, we're, we're really, well, let me just, I'm going to go a little bit further before we begin into this. It stood between the table of shoe bread and the golden lampstand, and it was in front of the veil, which we had up there a while ago. Upon it was to be offered a continual, y'all, a continual offering of incense. And the coals that went into this altar came from what? The brazen altar. And the brazen altar represented where Jesus died and laid his life down died on the cross, okay? That's where the coals came from. So it's really the most complete type of our Savior now in heaven who is interceding for you and I. Oh, Lord, this is important because it's continually, it's continually going, and he's continually, y'all, interceding for us. <clears throat> if he wasn't interceding for me, I'd be scared. I'd be worried. Someone have me up in here. That's why this is so important about the altar of the golden altar of incense. He is interceding today for you and I. Now I'll get you something here in a minute. Everybody thinks the Lord's interceding for the whole world. He really ain't. He died for the world. I'm getting a little bit ahead, Lord Heaven, but he died for the world. He's interceding for those who belong to him. Somebody out here right now, he's interceding for the saints. He really is. And it's the, you know, you've got to everybody that to come the same way. Somebody have me up in there. And it's a pure, complete picture of our Savior now in heaven, and that's where he's at by the right hand of the Father. Hebrews 9, 24 says this, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, talking about what Moses did when he put up the tabernacle, which are the figures. These were figures. These were types of the true of that which was to come. But in the heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Jesus is appearing in the presence of God. In fact, he's by the right hand of the Father, interceding for us right now this very minute. Every soul, every vessel that's been born again, every soul that's come through the brazen altar, come through the cross of Jesus, who's been cleansed by the blood, filled with the Spirit of God, Jesus is interceding for you. He's praying for you. See, I praise God that I know people are praying for me. But you know who the greatest prayer is, the greatest intercession is Jesus. And he's praying and he's interceding for us every single day. So no matter what I face, what I'm going through, I know my Savior is there. Come on, now He's there for me. He's there for you. Pray in the seat. He said, Father, He belongs to you. This is yours. We got to do something. We're gonna. I'm, if I gotta send my angels, whatever I gotta do, we need to do something in His life. He needs some help. Come on, church. I don't know about you, but I need some help. I need some help from the Holy Ghost sometimes. I need some help from them angels that we don't even see sometimes. Somebody help me up in here. We need help, and we got Jesus, my Lord. He knows everything you fix in the face, everything you're going through, and he's interceding. Hallelujah. In fact, I believe he's making a path. He's making a way. Hallelujah. And what the enemy is throwing down on the in front of you, Jesus said, oh, I've undefeated that. Come on, son. You can walk through it, or if you got to, we'll walk around it. We'll walk over it. Whatever we got to do. He makes a way. He is the way maker. And he's praying and he's interceding right now. Now, I praise God. I remember one time I was in a group on a praise team at Everlasting Tabernacle. We was all gathered up. We was all holding hands. We was all praying. We was fixed to come out and do some praise and worship. And it was a good prayer. I was feeling real good. Until one lady looked up at me. And she said, Donnie. And I know when she said Donnie, it sounded a little funny. 
It didn't sound like it was this good prayer we was having. She said, Don, the devil decided to sift you as wheat. And she stopped. She said, Donnie, the devil's desire to sift you is wheat. And it's like the Spirit of God rose up. Now, that was true, okay? That was true. That was going to happen. I got sifted like wheat. I'm telling you right now, it happened. But here's the key. When she said that, it's like the Spirit of God rose up and he said, but, but Jesus said, I prayed for you. Oh, yeah. See, I said, yeah. yes, but Jesus said, I prayed for you. I said, Jesus has prayed for me. He's interceding for me. He's going to break me through it. And I promise you, you're coming through now because Julie, Jesus is interceding for you. He's there for you. That's why you're coming through that battle. That's why you're coming through that storm. He knew it. Come on. He knew it was going to happen in my life. He knew exactly what's going to happen. He knows what's going to happen in your life. But praise God, He's interceding. He is the great high priest. Can I get another amen up here? Now, so what we have, we have Jesus in heaven. Offering the incense, that's his prayers, offering his prayers on our behalf. Oh, Lord, if you think about that for a minute. On our behalf, he's praying. The incense, his prayers, they rise constantly before the throne of God. Continuously. All these prayers. Last time the Lord says your prayers, he showing them up in Paul. He knows every prayer we pray, church. Every prayer. Here he is praying. Now, the brazen altar, we know Jesus died for us. We've talked about that. You remember we said that out. Jesus died for us in the brazen altar at the cross. At the cross of Jesus is what the brazen altar represented. He shed his blood and he reconciled us to God. That's what he did. That lamb, he saw that on God. At the golden altar of incense, Jesus lives to continually intercede for us. There's a big difference. <laughs> you got to see this. The brazen altar speaks of the death Everybody say the death of Jesus. That's what the cross represented. The brazen altar cross represents the death of Jesus. All right? But the altar of incense speaks of the living, resurrected Lord. So we got two altars. One represents death. One represents life. You know, that's the gospel, church. That's the gospel. Jesus had to die before he really lived. Oh, someone had it. Jesus died so that we could really believe. Yeah. Oh, my Lord, I didn't know what life was. I didn't, I didn't know what life was. So the Spirit of God came to me and he birthed me into his kingdom. Yes. I know what life is now, y'all. I thought life was partying and doing all this kind of crap, doing all this kind of mess that the world's doing. Guess what? That ain't life. That's really dead. I was dead in my sins, but praise God, put some life down on the inside of me. I really started living. Hallelujah. I found out that you don't even know what to expect today. God can do a miracle right now. In the next five minutes, whatever you need can be answered because you're serving the truth of the living God. We serve a resurrected Jesus. He's alive, church. So the old two altars speak of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And that is the full message of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 says this, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He died according to the word of God. Can I get an amen? Yeah. And verse 4 says he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Everything has to be according to the word of God. Everything's not according to my opinion or anybody else's opinion. Somebody else. It's according to the Word of God, what God says. And I promise you, it has to be done God's way. We're going to find that out in a minute. Can I get an amen up in here? It has to be God's way or no way. Your way won't get you into heaven. My way won't get me into heaven. My way won't deliver me. My way won't set me free. No faith will set you free and free you and get you into heaven is God's way. And God's way has always been through Jesus' spirit. It don't matter. Can I get another amen up in here? Now let's go ahead and look at this thing. We know that incense, we know by studying the scriptures, studying the word, that incense is a, is a common biblical figure for prayer and for intercession. Can I get another amen? We know that by Psalm 141.2. Psalm 141.2 says, Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. That's what David said. Let my prayer be like incense. So we now see that prayer is like a type of intercession or incense. Or incense is a type of prayer or intercession, okay? Now, we have Jesus who is interceding, y'all, for all of his children. Everyone who's saved and born again, Jesus is interceding for every one of us. 
And guess what? He can do it at the same time. My Lord, he could be interceding for Phil at the same time interceding for me. And Phil might be going something totally different. He may be going through something totally different than what I'm going through. But God sees it. The Lord sees it. Because all, all C and I sees everything. Praise God. And he knows. He knows what to do. He knows exactly what to do. We just got to line up with him. Now, we were saved, y'all. This is the key thing right here. We were saved. We were born again by the sacrifice on the brazen altar or by Jesus dying on the cross, which again, the brazen altar is a type that, okay? But now we're being kept. Oh, good Lord. Yes, we're being kept now by the incense, by the prayers of Jesus. Amen. I know everybody thinks they're keeping themselves where they're at. We think we're doing things to earn God's love. We're doing all this stuff. We're doing this. And because I'm doing so good, God's keeping me because I'm so good. I promise you, you ain't as good as you think you are. Somebody help me over here. It's the Lord who's keeping you. It's God. It's Jesus who's interceding for you. It's Jesus who said, Lord, I want to say, he says, Father, I got to do something. Look at him. He's going the wrong way. I got to put I got to put an obstacle in front of him. I can do something to turn him around. Come on. It's Jesus who's keeping you. Come on. It's Jesus who's keeping you on the road you need to be on. You ain't on that road by Come on, y'all. You think you just jumped on that road and you live with the Lord. I got news for you. You didn't. God put you on that road. Jesus made a way for you. He's interceding for you. And because he's interceding, it's like he's keeping us in the place he wants us to be. Oh, thank you. Hallelujah. Come on. Give God some praise, church. He's keeping you where you need to be. I'm telling you right now, I can't do it without him. I need some intercession. Somebody help me up in here. I need somebody going the back for me. I need the Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, somebody help me now. What I've got, where's that? The Bible says this, Jesus ever liveth, ever liveth to make intercession for us. In other words, he's continued our life. He'll, there's not, 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 not another time that Jesus said it was just his fleshly body that had died. That happened one time, church. He ever lived right now to make intercession. Now, Lord, I can't wait to see it, y'all. Come on, can't wait. Can't wait to see the one who's been interceding and helping you through this life. Amen. And I praise God because he says he'll never leave you or forsake you. Man, my good, but he won't. Now, look at this. John 17, 9 says this. What I told you earlier. He says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. This is part of the thing Jesus said. He said, I'm not praying for the world. And I'll tell you why, because he died for the world. Amen. He died for the world. He died for every soul, every vessel, whosoever will. Yes. And whosoever will will accept what he did. Will receive that death that he did on the cross. He says, I'm going to pray for him. Amen. He says, I'm going to intercede. That's what this scripture says. He says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine. Jesus says, Father, these Children, these men and women belong to you. So because they belong to you, I'm interceding for them. How <laughs> can you fail, church? Oh, oh Lord, I'm about to get so excited. I can't understand. I'm about to bust. How can you fail, y'all, if Jesus is interceding for you? Probably, if you could just get that in your spirit and know that. Quit trying to work that thing out yourself. You can't do it. Let Jesus do it. Come on. Let Jesus intercede. Let him lead you. Let him. He knows. He knows what we're facing. He knows what we're going through. Bye. Thank you, Lord. You see, the work of redemption, y'all, was finished on the cross of Calvary. We've been redeemed. Everybody say, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We've been redeemed. We've been set free. We've been delivered because of the blood of the Lamb. But his work of intercession, y'all, is still going on. Even as I speak right now, he's interceding. Hallelujah. Redemption is done. Redemption is a paid price. He paid the price for our salvation. Come on, y'all. That's done. But now, since he's done that part, he's laid his life down. He died as that Lamb. He's now interceding. Hallelujah. Because he rose from the dead. His body, he rose, y'all, and he's interceding for every one of us. Man, when I think about that, I said, Lord, redemption was finished. Intercession continues. Now, this is going to be important here in a minute, okay? And a person who has not been redeemed don't have a mediator or nobody interceding for him. That's why you better be redeemed. You better be cleansed by the blood. Come on, you better be born again. You better be born again, sir. So the Lord will go to bat for you. So the Lord will take care of you. So the Lord will pray for you. 
when you're going through a hard place, when you're in the midst of a storm, when you're in the fire, somebody help me. When you get in the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and you're bound all up and you can't do nothing, and you're standing there in a fire, and all of a sudden, the fourth man in the fire shows up, and he said, hallelujah, in the fire. Don't even hurt you. Come on, y'all. If I had you bound, you done got loose. Hallelujah. Because you're in the fire with Jesus. Come on. I told you, he's praying and he's interceding. And whatever he's got to do, he'll do it. Them boys were stowed in, bound. But they was walking around loose, wasn't they? They was giving God the praise and the glory and the honor. Because the fourth man in the fire was with Who is that fourth man in the fire? Hallelujah! His name is Jesus! Hallelujah! He is the fourth man. Where are you at right now? In that storm you're thinking you at, I promise you, the Lord is there with you. He ain't with no way. Mark it down, believe it, no way. Come on, somebody help me up in here. He ain't letting go of nothing. He don't let go of his children. We may let go of him sometimes, but I promise you, he don't let go of you. He'll get you back to the place you need to be. Because he's God. Ask Jonah when you get to heaven. Come on, Jonah turned his back on God. Jonah was running from God. But let me tell you, God wouldn't let him go. And he took a big fish to swallow him up. Come on, somebody help me. But God didn't let him go. God made provision like he's making for you right now. Woo, can I get another one? Amen. I am getting to preach some. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I love it. You see, God has a way of saving sinners, y'all. But here's the way, here's how it happens, y'all. God has a way of saving sinners, but comes first comes death. Second comes life. First comes death. Second comes life. There ain't no life till somebody dies, y'all. Somebody help me up in here. Now watch this. One thief on the cross prayed. Y'all remember the story of two thieves on the cross, one on each side? One, one thief was praying, and his prayer didn't do him no good. I'm going to show you something here right now. He was praying. The story found in Luke. I didn't write it down, but anyway, Luke something. Y'all look that. <laughs> the other is praying. His, well, let's just do this. One prayed. He said, if thou be the Christ, Save yourself and us. Let's think about this for a minute. Two thieves on the cross. One of those thieves said, if, he said, if you're really the Messiah, come down off the cross. Save us. Save yourself and save us. What is he trying to do, y'all? He's bypassing God's way of salvation. Yes. He's bypassing death. Jesus had to die, y'all, to pay the price for our sins. What about the other, the other thing? The other, the other thing prays, Lord, remember me. But listen, he said, he said, remember me. But here's the key, y'all. He said, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. In other words, here's what he said. He said, Lord, I know you're going to die. And I know I'm going to die too. Because he said, you're going to enter into your kingdom. You're fixed to enter into your kingdom. Could you please just remember me? Which prayer do you think God answered? Somebody help me up in here. What prayer did God answer? What prayer did Jesus answer? He answered the one. He answered the, the, the prayer of the thief who said, Lord, just remember me. I know you fixed them now. I'm in the same place you are, Lord, but, but I ain't you. I need you, Lord. I need you, Jesus. Would you just please remember me? You know what? Jesus remembered him. Hallelujah. He said, this day, you're going to be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. And I promise you, that very day, one thief was without him, and the other thief was with him. Another thief hadn't done nothing good as far as I can see. But one good thing he did, he says, Lord, please just remember me. Y'all, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If you don't know Jesus, just ask him to remember you, to help you come into your life. Jesus took him. I, I like to tell him like this. Mary's son died on the cross. But the son of God stepped off the cross. The spiritual son of God stepped off of that cross. He went to the center of this earth, church. Come on. He had that thief right with him. That thief that hung on that cross, I believe he was, I believe he just locked up arms with it. Come on, baby. I think it's something like this. I know she ain't no thief. She's a wonderful person. She's awesome. But praise God, I believe that that thief 
And this lovely lady by me, praise God, Mom, was right beside Jesus, y'all. I believe in where Jesus went, he was right there. I, I believe Jesus took him with him. And they went to the middle of this earth, the center of this earth, where, the, where really hell and, and the paradise was at. Come on, y'all. There's a great gulf that's separating Hades, hell, and in the bosom of Abraham, which was paradise. Jesus revealed himself, y'all. Yes, well, that thing's yes. right beside him, showing him his grace and mercy. And every soul, every vessel that was in the bosom of Abraham, guess what? He took them all to heaven. Hallelujah. Yes. The third heaven has been moved, y'all. The third heaven's up here with God now. Paradise has been moved. But Jesus paid that price. Jesus paid that. Can we get another amen? Yes. Good Lord, thank you, Jesus. One thief made it. One thief didn't because you cannot bypass death. You know, even with us today, because we're going to go a little bit deeper with this. I mean, you've got to die. You've got to die in yourself. You've got to die in your will. Come on, y'all. As soon as I read it again, it trespasses and sin. But then, I, we, want, we want to do things our own way. The natural man wants to do things his own way. Thinks he can work his own way, work his own way out. Make a new way to go to heaven. There ain't no new way to go to heaven. The way to go to heaven has been established. It'll never be changed, like I promise you. I don't care what people preach. I don't care what people say around this world. The way of salvation has been established. It comes to death and then life. Jesus laid his life down. Jesus died for us. Now it's time for us. The Bible says that we're in Christ. That's why he died on the cross. Now we have died in him. In other words, our own nature, our will, is now broken. Our will don't belong to us no more. Now it's his will be done. Father, not your will, Father, not my will, but your will be done in me. Father, I belong to you. What do you want me to do today? You my daddy, you my father. Jesus, you paid the price. What do we need to do today? Take me by the arm, take me by the hand. Let's go and see what we can get into. Hallelujah. Somebody help me up in here. That's the Lord we serve, y'all. Our will needs to be broken. We're dead in him now, in Christ. And he's made us alive spiritually speaking. Can I get another amen? Now, the other thief wanted to be saved, y'all. Not by the death of Christ, but by the life of Christ. That's what people want to die. People don't want to die to their own nature. Is that a little bit too steep for y'all? We got there. People don't want to die to their own nature. We got, we're dead. Now, the old man's got to be dead. Is the old man dead? Somebody help me up here. We're a new creature from the Lord, a new creation. So death comes first in life. We die before we can live, y'all. We must die. If you ever want to live, somebody help me now. If you ever want to live, you got to die. See, crazy on it. But we die to the things of this world. How many has been in the world? Just raise your hand. I just want to see. How many has been in the world with the things of the world? Did it make you happy? Did it, did it sustain you? No. So now we're dead to that. We don't need that no more. We've got new life in us. And that life is awesome, by the way. It's wonderful. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Hallelujah. So now, we who are born again have died along with Christ. Once we are dead, y'all, to the old world, to our own nature, Jesus can then raise us up. And then he begins interceding on our behalf. He's interceding. He's praying. Now, as we have already pointed out earlier through this teaching, and I'm going to get you this here, the tabernacle not only speaks of Jesus, but it speaks of us and one in the living being in him. Right? Yeah, we know that? See, the tabernacle represents Jesus, but if we're in Jesus, guess what? It can represent us too, because we're in the Lord. So here's where we're going. We're about through. I'm just going over a little bit. So what we have now, we, everyone that's in here that are saved and born again, we have a ministry. That ministry is a ministry of prayer and intercession. Come on, God, we pray and we intercede for one another. And I'm going to tell you, that's the most awesome thing that a person can do. See, we think the most awesome thing is preaching or singing or this or whatever. The most awesome ministry you can do that you can have is a ministry of prayer and interceding. Yes. Think about it. Jesus is the greatest interceding for us, y'all. Now, because we're like him, we're in him, we intercede, we pray for one another. We ask God to move on our brother's behalf, on my sister's behalf. Lord, help them. Lord, they need a, they need a miracle. Give them a miracle. 
So we begin to, we have a minister of interceding. The highest office one can have, y'all, is that of intercessory prayer. And see, nobody talks about intercessory prayer because it's, wow, it can be a battle. Yes. Yes. See, a lot of people don't want to have intercessory prayer. They don't want to pray because there's a battles in there. Yes, Daniel, he had to fast for 21 days, so he got his answer. He's praying, y'all, waiting on the Lord. But that's a ministry God's called us to, every one of us to pray and to intercede for one another. My Lord, Moses interceded for Israel. God was ready to wipe them all out. He's going to start all over. Moses interceded. Abraham interceded for Lot. Somebody help me up in here. He interceded for Lot. And the Bible says Lot's righteous spirit was vexed. But yet, Abraham interceded for him. We're to intercede and pray for one another. Now, I want to show you, give you something right here. We're about through. Our prayer of intercession is really how we worship God. When we're praying and we're interceding, guess what? We're actually worshiping God. We're worshiping the Father. Now, this is important because what I'm fixing to say here, I pray that you get this in your spirit. We must worship God. Everybody say, I've got to worship God before I can serve Him. Oh, somebody help me now. People want to serve God, but don't want to worship Him. It don't work. God don't, I meant to say this, God don't honor that. God will never honor, honor service before worship. Worship must come first. How do we know that? We're fixing in right here, y'all. We know it by Mary and Martha, which is found in Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. You can read it for yourself, okay? I'm going to paraphrase some of it. But Mary, Mary sat down at Jesus' feet. She worshipped him. She heard his sayings. She, she picked the better thing to do. What did Martha do, y'all? Martha it's two women together. Martha chooses to go and fix a meal, prepare, to work, to serve. Guess what? Martha's doing all this work. She's serving. She's doing all this. And she gets mad. She gets mad at her sister because her sister has picked the better thing to do. Somebody help me now. I tell you, Jesus said what Mary is doing, it will not be taken from her. What Mary was doing was the right thing to do. What Martha should have done first, y'all, when Jesus come into the house, she should have done the same thing Mary done. Jesus didn't tell her to start serving. Somebody help me up in here. She should have said, Mary, I'm sitting there with you, honey. We're going to worship the Messiah. And when we get through worshiping the Messiah, then we're going to serve him. Hallelujah. Come on, church. You can't serve God until you learn to worship him. you got to worship him first. And then you serve him. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church. And when you begin to worship God, when you begin to worship the Lord, which you have to do first, and you begin to serve Him, guess what? You begin to serve all the people around you. Yeah. Why do you think we're serving so many people around here? Why do you think we're feeding so many people around here? Because we're worshiping God. We're giving God the praise, the glory, and the honor. Come on, church. My Lord. Somebody help me stand on your feet and give God some praise. Come on, y'all give God a clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said, Mary shows him the good part, and it's not going to be taken. I promise you, if you worship God, you can begin to serve God. Hallelujah. Can I get a big amen up in here? Worship always comes first. So praise God, y'all, for the golden altar of incense and what it typifies in the pattern. It's all about Jesus interceding. Praying for his children. Isn't that awesome, church? And now because he's prayed for us, he's interceding. Now we begin to pray and mercy for one another. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I thank you right now that you ever liveth to make intercession for us. Lord, you're continually interceding for those who belong to you. Lord, I praise you right now. I give you the praise. Lord, I give you the glory. I give the honor. You are God. There is no other. Lord, I thank you that we worship you so we can serve you. 
We worship so we can serve. Father, Lord, I pray. Father, I pray for every soul in the that the sound of my voice. Father, Lord, God, birth your word in them. Birth that intercessory prayer, Father, by the power of the living God in every soul and every vessel in this house. In the name of Jesus, Father, by the power of the living God. You are the high priest. You are the great intercessor, Father. And Lord, we pray for every soul and every vessel right now in the name of Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I'm not really praying or interceding the way I should. If you're in here today and you're not praying and interceding for those around you, I just want you to slip up your hand because we're going to pray for you today. I'm not going to embarrass you. No, my name will actually come up. But if you got if you if you feel like you're not really praying and interceding like you should, I want you to raise your hand because I believe God's gonna move in your life. God wants you to birth y'all. I see that hand. Praise God. Come on, church. Come on, come on, come on. I believe God wants to birth some intercessory prayer in some people here today. Y'all, it's time for us to pray. It's time for us to intercede for one another. Is there another head of this building? Come on, y'all. We just want to pray. We're gonna believe God right now. He is the great intercessor. He wants us to learn to be that intercession, to be that prayer warrior for those around us. Hallelujah. Lord, is there another hand in here? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you right now. Those hands that were raised, Father, right now, Lord, teach them. You're the great high priest. You're the great intercessor. Father, teach us to pray. Teach us to intercede for one another, Father. Oh, Lord God, by the power of the living God in the name of Jesus, Father, I ask that you would birth intercessory prayer in every soul, every vessel of the sound of my voice in this congregation, Father, by the power of the living God in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, I praise you for every soul, every vessel in this house by the power of the living God. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye still closed. I don't want to leave this place without letting people know, listen, if you're not saved and you're not born again, all you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're in here today and you're not saved, you're not born again, I, I don't have to lay hands on you, but I'll be glad to. I'll lay hands on you. I'll pray. If you're in today and you're not saved, you're not born again, I want you to slip your hand up. Because I don't want nobody to ever leave this building, y'all, that don't know Jesus. Hallelujah. My prayer is that everybody in here is saved. Hallelujah. If you're not saved, I encourage you, call upon Jesus. Call upon His name. He'll save you. He'll deliver you. He'll set you free in the name of Jesus. Shall we have 13 men, 13 men last night come to the Lord. Heard a word. Come on, y'all. This is awesome, wonderful. Power, presence of the Lord. An 80-year-old lady sang. Boy, I tell you, when she sang, the anointing just fell in that place. God began to move. God is good, church. He's awesome. He's wonderful. So my prayer is that I pray that every soul in this house is saved and born again. Father, we thank you. Lord, I praise you right now for every soul and every vessel in this house. Use us for your glory, Father. Fill us with the spirit of the living God. Lord, we lose your good and blood. We cleanse and recover. We lose your mighty power, your mighty strength. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.